Well, hello there, YouTubes. It has been a while. Welcome to the Deadly Analysis Podcast. I hope that you guys are alive and well during this rather insane time that we find ourselves in. So one of the things that's kind of gotten me through a lot of this pandemic nonsense has been catching up on really good horror novels. Horror novels, not horror novels. That's a very different genre. After all, we're kind of living through a dystopian era of sorts, so why not just jump in all the way and embrace it? So I've done a couple horror reviews on modern, uh, a couple modern Lovecraftian horror novels, for example, John Langan's The Fisherman and Laird Barron's The Croning. And in the comments of those videos that I made, a lot of you requested that I check out Kathy Coge's The Cipher. And I did, so this is my spoiler-free review of it. So this book won both a Bram Stoker Award and a Locus Award in 1991, and for good reason, um, it's a deeply disturbing, bleak, and thought-provoking book about a, a video store clerk named Nicholas who discovers a foot-wide, I guess, black vortex is the best way to put it, uh, in an old abandoned room in his apartment. So it's like a pitch black hole in the floor, essentially. And so Nicholas and his friend slash lover slash kind of enemy also, uh, Nakoda, they both christen this thing as the fun hole. And, uh, which is kind of strange, that's what they call it, the fun hole. And so Nicholas and Nakoda become more and more obsessed with the fun hole and they start experimenting by putting things down there, uh, including a jar of insects, a live mouse, and they even use a severed hand from the morgue. And let's just say that each of the things that go down don't come up the same. So, you know, Nicholas working at a video store, eventually they put a video camera down the fun hole and what it records is the most Clive Barker sort of shit you can imagine. It's truly the stuff of nightmares and it fuels the obsession that these two have over the fun hole. And eventually, uh, Nicholas accidentally places his hand in the fun hole, which begins to change him in a way that can only be described as a Cronenbergian wet dream. Uh, this book is like unbearably grungy and sweaty and putrid. I mean, the characters are all pretty much pathologically unlikable, dirty, disgusting people. They're obsessive and really just terrible human beings. And this was initially a massive turnoff for me. Like, I almost didn't finish this book because there's really zero redeeming qualities to Nicholas and Nakoda. They're complete assholes to one another and they have some of the most negative and vitriolic uh, outlooks on life that you can imagine. Just to give you one example of how nasty this book is, um, there's a scene where uh, Nicholas is uh, dropping a deuce, let's say, going number two. And um, as he's finishing, Nakoda comes in and pl pleasures him, let's say, right after he's like in the process of ending his his deuce dropping. Um, so, uh, you know, in fact, there there is an abnormal amount of like sexual and scatological imagery in this book. Lots of oral sex and pants pooping happen in the cipher. Very strange, very strange, Kathy Koja. But I think I got at a certain point, I felt like when you read this book, you're meant to sort of feel like you're licking an ashtray. Um, you're meant to feel disgusted. You're meant to feel semi-detached from the characters. And as I continued through the book, I started to realize like how important that aspect was to the story and maybe, maybe really even the larger purpose of the read, especially as Nicholas and Nakoda become more and more obsessed with this void, this fun hole. And for the philosophically inclined folks, this book takes this void, this fun hole, and it uses it, uses it as a tool to think about the privation view of evil. That is to say, the big bad in the cipher is properly contextualized by a framework that sees the idea of evil as the absence or the privation of good. So think of a donut hole, right? A donut hole is sort of defined by what it isn't. It's the absence of a donut. It's that circular non-donut thing right in the middle of a donut. It's a not donut. And it's this kind of Augustinian view of evil that Kathy Koja really plays with when it comes to this pit, this void. Uh, this book at times feels very ethereal, very Lovecraftian, and then at other times it's just, it's just straight out body horror. Uh, the style of writing is at times frustrating and frenetic. It's sort of a stream of consciousness style of writing that's often mixed with uh, the mundane. So for example, like there's multiple paragraphs just dedicated to making a peanut butter sandwich, right? It's just, it's a very different 
And if I'm being honest, kind of difficult style of writing for me, it was a bit of work to make my way through this book at times. But overall, the cipher grew on me. And although I like absolutely hated the characters, I realized at some point during the read that it's sometimes worthwhile to peek into those really gross and wretched corners of the soul. I got a sense as I made my way through the cipher that filth and depravity and disgust are just as worthwhile teachers as things that are wholesome or sustaining. And I, I think that might be part of some of Koja's point with this book. So. Um, the Cypher is a definite recommend from me, but one that I think you'll definitely have to earn as you make your way through the book. If you have any other good, modern, semi-Lovecraftian horror novels that you would like me to read, please comment on them below. Um, I'm always interested in recommendations, and in fact, this book was a recommendation, so uh, there's your proof. But as always, thanks for watching.